Man, what an introduction. Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you very much. Um, so I was uh, reading in the book of Job, and I was looking at all of the bad things that happened to Job. He, uh, you know, he had uh, the boils, he lost, his, uh, he lost his kids, he lost all of his wealth, but he never, left, well, he never lost his wife. I wondered why that was. And I started thinking, how, how bad was Job's wife <laughs> for him to stay there? Or for her to stay there. That was also a curse. Yes. <laughs> That's not what I'm preaching on. Um, go ahead and open up your Bibles to the uh, book of Matthew. We're going to be in Matthew 14. It's going to be verses 22 through 33. And when you get there, could you please stand um, as we read God's word? Follow along. I'll, I'll start in verse number 22 and read down to verse number 33. And straight away, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side. And while he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, Wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Dear Lord, um, I just need you today, God. I need you to uh, speak through me. I need you to clear any nerves off of me, God. And just allow me to uh, focus on what, what you've given me. Um, allow me to focus on your word and solely your word. Allow me not to say anything that is not in your will. Allow me not to say anything that goes contrary to your word, Lord. Just, um, uh, you brought these people in to um, hear what you have for them, God. So I just ask that they can walk out of here filled, filled with something that they can carry with them throughout the rest of their week. In your name we pray. Amen. You all may be seated. Thank you very much. Uh, so this is one of my favorite passages of Scripture. And I actually uh, revisited this passage um, a few weeks ago. And uh, Brother David and some of the teenagers, that may sound like a familiar passage because just a few weeks ago we went through it. Um, but I thought it was so good that I, I wanted to make a variation of it and bring it to all of you because um, we are so distracted in our world today. Uh, and that's the, that's the title of the, the message is Focus in a World of Distractions. Right. I mean, we, we have distractions all over the place. Um, we're constantly on our cell phones. We've got I've even got a smartwatch here on my on my wrist. I, I mean, I almost can't go a full hour without uh, something trying to grab my attention. We've got, um, you know, we all have our families. We've got our jobs. We've got our responsibilities that we have to attend to. And sometimes we lose our focus on um, what we should be focused on, which is Jesus Christ. Um, so I'm going to be kind of breaking down that passage here. Um, but be, before we get to that, can we go to the next slide, Kyler? Next slide, Kyler. Sorry. <laughs> um, I want to make mention of our theme for the years, that, that I may know him. Um, if we truly want to get to know him this year, we have to make sure that we put our focus on him. Right. Um, throughout the, the, the trial, throughout the struggles, throughout everything, we need to make sure we have our focus on him. So I've got three points that I'm going to go through today. We've got uh, send the multitudes away, the disciples fear, and Peter's focus. Before I get into that, I want to give you a little bit of a recap on where Jesus is at in his ministry during this time. So uh, chapter 14 is about halfway through Jesus' earthly ministry. John the Baptist had just been beheaded. He had just been killed. Um, and so Jesus takes, says to the disciples, we're going, we're leaving. Um, so they, they start their journey. And the Bible says that a ton of people started gathering around Jesus. They just wanted to be with Jesus. And thousands and thousands of people started gathering around Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus had compassion on these people, and they, he healed their sick. 
And then uh, that very night is where we get the, the famous story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 with the five loaves of bread and two fishes. Um, fishes? Fish? It's fish the plural? <laughs> Anyways. Um, and that leads us right into uh, verse number 22 in chapter 14, uh, which you can turn to the next slide, which is, uh, send the multitudes away. So it says in 22 and 23, and straight away Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship. And to go before him unto the other side. And while he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. So Jesus, after this tough moment of John the Baptist being beheaded and um, crazy craziness going on for Jesus right now, he just wants to take a moment where he can be alone with God, one on one. Um, no one else around. He sent the thousands of people away. He sent his disciples to go on the ship. He said, go across the Sea of Galilee. I'll, I'll meet you on the other side. I just need to take a moment, just me and God right now. And I'll ask you, how's your one-on-one -on -one time with God? Um, how often are we seeking that private time to just be there one-on-one, -on -one, no other distractions, silencing the cell phone, um, putting, taking off the watch, turning off the music, turning off the TV, just to have one-on-one -on -one personal time with God, to talk to him. Um, that ties in with our, with our theme, that I may know him. Um, that's, that's the only way that you're going to be able to do it, is if you have that personal one-on-one -on -one time with God. Um, Matthew 6, 5, and 6, which is the next slide, it says, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee opening, or openly. Sorry. Um, I just want to reiterate, uh, make sure we're doing this. The Bible says, if you have to, clear out a closet. And Amen. go into the closet, shut the door, make sure you are getting that one-on-one -on -one time with God. How concerning would it be if pastor, he's, you know, he's the leader of our church, he's the leader of the congregation, and the only time he prayed was up here on Sunday morning. Um, how concerning would it be for me if I got up here and our deacons, whenever we're passing out the Lord's Supper, that's the only time we pray. It's the same thing for you. It should be concerning if this is the only time that you're spending with God is on Sunday morning. Yes, make sure every single yes, day we are getting that one-on-one -on -one time with God. Uh, sometimes we fall into bad prayer habits. I just, uh, this happened to me last week, and I, and I caught myself. I'm thankful that God po pointed it out. I was getting ready for bed, and I started praying. And uh, I started pointing out the obvious to God. I started saying, Lord, you've given me an, you've given me an amazing life. You've given me an amazing wife. You've given me an amazing um, home. You've given me an amazing church. And then that was, that was pretty much my prayer. That was, that was it. And I'm not saying to don't count your blessings. Absolutely, you need to count your blessings, and that will give you unspeakable joy to count your blessings. Um, but can we dive a little bit deeper than that? Can we dive a little bit deeper to know what God has for us? Um, instead of just pointing out the obvious to God. I mean, I was, uh, I was happy to have Jeremiah Smith here with us last week, and I can't remember the exact quote uh, but it was, he, he had to say it two times. I'm glad he said it two times because I didn't catch it the first time. He said, he said something along the lines of, we're, we're happy doing things for God that we're comfortable with. And sometimes our prayers reflect that. And sometimes we, want, uh, we don't want to ask God what he has for our lives today. We don't want to ask God what his will is for our lives. And we don't want to ask him to impart his wisdom because we may not like the answer. We don't, we, it may make us uncomfortable. Um, and so as we pray and as we enter into our one-on-one -on -one time with God, Make sure it's a two-sided two -sided prayer instead of just saying, God, you've just given me so much. You've given me so much. God, what can, you do? What, what can I do for you? What do you have for me today? What do you have me to do for you today? Um, so we need to give God back the power in our prayers and in our praise. Amen. And in our praise. Um, next slide, please, Kyler. Is it a little bit small on your screens there? Can you see that? This is a... Music lyric. This is a uh, this is the first verse of one of the most popular songs on K Love right now. I love K Love. I mean, it's 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 a it's a good Christian station. I'm I'm glad they give us an alternative uh, to to listen to music than all the other worldly stations out there. But this is the the first verse of one of the most popular songs on K Love right now. It says, "Strong, try to make them all think I'm strong. Yeah, the face I keep putting on says I ain't tired, but these tear-stained eyes ain't lying." 
Because hard, nobody told me life could be so hard. A weary soul with a worn out heart that's barely beating. But every time I get that feeling. Again, that's, that's the, one of the number one praise songs on the radio right now. And yes, it ties back into Jesus. And it's a good emotional story about a broken down person who finds Jesus. And that, that's great. But can we compare it to one of our hymnals that, that we sing? Go to the next slide. Tyler. This is one of our popular hymns that we sing. Um, and it's Great is Thy Faithfulness. It says, Great is Thy Faithfulness, which is taken directly out of uh, God's Word, Lamentations 3.23. It says, Great is Thy Faithfulness, O God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not. As Thou hast been, Thou forever will be. Amen. You see the, almost the, the, the difference in, in the songs. One is very self-centered, one is very um, focusing on the, on the struggles and of the trials and of the bad things of life, and one is just giving God the glory. Amen which is why I'm, I'm so thankful for our hymns, and, and I hope that nothing ever changes with that, and we, we stay um, a church uh, that, that reads out of the hymn books. Um, but but let's, let's change our, 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 let's give the power back to God in our prayers and in our praise. Um, next slide, please. Kyla. The first thing I want, to, I want you to, to recognize that, um, you know, we need, we need to send the multitudes away, make sure we have one-on-one time with God. Next, I want you to notice the disciples' fear. Um, the disciples were very scared on this ship. Uh, and this is, uh, I believe this is 24 through 28. Let me read it real quick. But the ship was now uh, in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. Um, I have to remind myself, and I have to remember, these are grown, grown men, right? And these, are, these are guys who have had life's, life's experiences. I'm sure they've seen their fair share of storms. They've, um, some of them were fishermen. And so the fact that they were so scared of this storm makes me wonder, you know, these must have been some pretty big waves. The, the thunder must have been pretty loud, and the lightning must have been pretty bright for them to be this scared on the ship from this storm. Um, and then 2 Timothy 1.7, which is a verse that we uh, all need to claim, and uh, some of us daily need to claim this verse. It says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's that next screen, Kyler. Um, Amen. So these men had their focus on the storm. These men were so concerned with the high waves and of the, the lightning and the thunder and the rain, of course they're going to be fearful. It's the only thing that they're looking at is just the storm. How often are we scared of things? How often do we get uh, scared of the next bill coming due or um, our general responsibilities as an adult? How often do we get scared of uh, even fellowshipping with other believers? And we get that anxiety of having to talk to other people. Um, and we get, uh, what about even just physical items like uh, who's scared of spiders? Anybody? Yes. Um, yeah. Thunder, lightning, uh, tornadoes, earthquakes. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in these things that we're scared of that that's all that we can focus on. And that's what's going to consume us is our fear. And if we look at the, the first Timothy 1 7, it says, God, that's not from God. God did not give us that spirit. Um, do we think Jesus knew about the storm? We think, yeah, of course. He, he's omniscient, right? He's, he's God in the flesh. He fully knew about this storm. He wanted to see that when, when the going got tough, when the storm started brewing, would the disciples focus on the storm or would they focus on him? Um, of course, we know they, they, they focused on the storm. Um, and that, that's what's going to happen to us if we, if we look at our storms, which is, you know, that's any issue that we have in, going on in life. Um, if we focus on it, it will consume us and it will take us deeper and deeper and deeper into the storm. Um, there's three re reasons why I'm a Christian. Three reasons. One, Jesus Christ came and died, saved me to give me um, eternal life in heaven. It's my primary reason. The least that I can do is serve God. Um, two, he made my life a million times better since I started serving him. I have more joy, I have more peace, I have more happiness. 
Um, my life has just been completely turned around since I started following Jesus Christ. And three, I want to see change. Um, I want to see change in myself. I want to see change in families. I want to see change in um, some churches. I want to see change in uh, towns. I want to see change in schools and in young people. And Jesus Christ is the only person that's going to be able to do that. Um, you know, I'm very nervous and I'm, I get very uh, scared, which I guess is contrary to what I'm talking about. <laughs> I get very, uh, very weary about uh, the young people today and, and the teenagers because we have parents and we have uh, leaders and we have the school teachers and, and school systems and governments that are so fearful because they see the issues of the world going all around them and they get paralyzed by the storm. And they're so, yes, quick, to, they're so quick to complain about it and they're so quick to say this is, this is not going right, things aren't, aren't going good, but they just stand there and do nothing. And God will allow us, and Jesus, following Jesus and setting our focus on Jesus will allow us to be able to do the impossible. We're going to see here in a little bit that, that Peter was able to do the impossible by setting his focuses on Jesus. Um, uh, there's two testimonies that I think about quite often. Um, now, ev everybody's testimony who's been saved by, by Jesus Christ is an awesome testimony, but there's two that I think about often. Um, one is, is pastor's testimony, and one is the good pastor's testimony in the back. The reason why those testimonies stick with me so much is because there was one person who saw the storm around them and was able to look past it and set their focuses on Jesus Christ, and that was able to change generations. Right. Yes, Just with one person setting their focus on Jesus Christ. If we want to see change in our families, if we want to see change in our um, school systems, if we want to see change in our governments, we need to set our focus on Amen. Christ. Um, uh, FDR said, said this, which is the next slide. He said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And yes, that applies a lot with what I'm talking about here. The only thing that should scare you is that when the storm starts brewing, when things start getting tough, when, when things aren't working out the way that we want them to, and you get paralyzed, and you don't want to move, and you just want to, and you just start getting consumed more and more by the storm. That is the only thing that should scare you. If you set your focus on Christ, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it at all. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's not going to be an easy thing to wake up every day and set your focus on Christ. But it will, it will require discipline and it will require hard work and it will require dedication. And it's going to be a daily thing that you have to wake up and say, Lord, I'm setting my focus on you today. I don't want the issues of the world to consume my life because it will draw you in. And it, 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 the deeper and deeper, like I said, the deeper you get into it, the harder it is to get out. There are so many people that are just so wrapped up in the storm, so wrapped up in the storm. And it... it whether they're uh, blind to it or not, they're, they're scared. And they don't have guidance, and they don't have um, a leader or wisdom, and that's going to be Jesus Christ. And the only way they're going to get out of it is to put their focus towards it. Um, then lastly, I want us to see uh, Peter's focus. Peter's focus. That is 28 through 33. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee, Bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when was Pe and Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go with Jesus. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshiped him saying of a truth thou art the son of god notice peter here peter was scared with the other men he was he was terrified he was he, i mean he was he was just like all the other ones but he saw someone out on the lake and and or on the sea and everybody thought it was a ghost everyone was everyone was terrified but peter saw him and he, and he saw it was jesus and he, he set his eyes on Jesus, and he knew that the only way that they were going to get out of there was to put their focus on Jesus and look at Jesus. And um, what happened next? We know what happened next. Peter was able to actually do the impossible. He was actually able to walk 
on the sea. He was uh, walking on water, which is an amazing thing. It's so awesome, these, these stories in Scripture that we can read. And I just hope we get to play it back when we get to heaven and watch, watch all these scenarios play out. Um, but Peter, he was able to do something uh, radical, something impossible with having his focus set on Jesus Christ. And it's the same thing for all of us. If we set our focus on Jesus, we can do impossible things that seem impossible. Um, yeah, I guess that's <laughs> um, But it's not over there. Uh, Peter starts doing the impossible. He, he has his focus set on Jesus. And, uh, and then what happens in uh, verse... 30 it says, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried, saying, Lord, save me. The second Peter lost his focus, the second Peter took his eyes off Jesus Christ, he started to sink. Sometimes I think when we, when we read this story when we were kids, um, we think when Peter was sinking in the, in, the, in the sea, it was almost like he was sinking in quicksand and you know, like he was slowly going down. Have you ever jumped into a pool or jumped into Lake Michigan? I mean, it is a plunge. It is instant. You're just you're there in water and you're you're drenched, and it's a very fast process. It's not something that happens slowly, um, and that's how quick we can get sucked back into the storm if we take our eyes off Jesus. Matthew thirteen twenty five. It's on the screen there. Um, but while men slept, his enemy came. Um, real quick story for you guys. A few weeks ago, uh, me and my wife were uh, just in our house as normal as a normal night. Um, Peter was sleeping, and uh, I just I couldn't go to sleep. And so I, I got out of the room so I didn't keep Michaela up, and all the lights in the house are off. Uh, for all anybody knew, the house was asleep. The house was quiet. Um, and I, if you've ever been to my house... I have my, my couch facing my front door, and I have my TV to the right. And I'm sitting on my couch. It's 12.04 in the morning. And I'm sitting on my couch. I'm on my phone. I see a head go by my front door. I'm not joking. I see a head go by my front door. And uh, I didn't have a gun at the time. I do now. But <laughs> didn't have a gun at the time. So I didn't know what I was going to do. All of a sudden, I was like the disciples on the ship. I, I was starting to get scared. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, it, so I gave it a few minutes. I didn't see anything else. And I have a I have doorbell camera. I have uh, a camera on the front of my house. And I got two cameras on the back of my house. And so I, I look at the camera, and I can see two, two young men. They come running from the street. They came uh, running around my, my truck, around my garage. And they came up in between my garage and my house right up to the front door. The second they saw the, the, the camera, though, he, he pulled his hood over his face, and uh, I could hear him on the camera. They said, oh, there's a camera right there. And then they, they took off running. So I don't know what they were trying to do. I don't know if they were trying to get in the car. I don't know if they were trying to get in the house. I don't know. But I'm thankful that I had my security system because the second they saw the, the camera, they ran away. Um, knowing God and keeping your focus on him will be your security system. It will be um, the thing that makes the enemy run away. Uh, you know, there's a constant spiritual battle going around us all the time. There's, uh, the devil's trying to get you to come into the storm. He's trying to get you to, uh, to lose your focus on God. He's trying to get you not to come to church on Wednesdays and on Sunday mornings and on Sunday nights. And He's, he's trying and he's trying and he's trying. Uh, but just like those trespassers were on my uh, at my house, the the second he sees that you've got God as the cor- or Jesus as the cornerstone of your life, and and he's at the forefront of your focus, he's gonna run away. He's not gonna he's not gonna be able to do anything with it. He's gonna try again. He'll try again the next day, and he'll try again the next day. But that's why it's a it's a constant remembrance that we need to have to put Jesus at the forefront of our life. Knowing God will. Um, Knowing God and keeping your focus will be your security system. And then last screen, last slide. Takeaways. So a few takeaways that I want us to get from this. Man, Pastor, I do not know how you read that back there. That is very tiny. (laughs) I didn't write these bullet points down. 
First one is get one-on-one, one-on-one time with God. Make sure we are sending the multitudes away regularly. Make sure that we yes, um, are going into a private place, seeking a private place. Um, husbands, this is the one time it is okay to tell your wife to go away. Um, <laughs> don't. Brother Paul, I know Eunice is going to come in next week, and she's going to say, oh, Paul's, Paul's been growing a relationship with God. He's been in the garage all, all week. <laughs> Um, make sure we're getting one-on-one time with God. Trust God. When the going gets tough, when the storm starts brewing, when things seem like they're going crazy, make sure that we trust God and we trust his process. Um, and then lastly, let's remember, let's keep our focus. Is that what it says? Yep. Keep your focus and, uh, on God and remember your salvation. Every single day, keep your focus on God. Remember your salvation. That will, that will um, help us move mountains. That will help us do things that are impossible. And let's pray. Dear Lord God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this message, Lord. Just, um, I hope somebody got something out of this, Lord. I know that you are uh, doing a work in all of our lives. I know you're doing a work in my life, Lord. Um, continue to use me and continue to use the members of your church here. Um, and keep us safe as we go. Um, Back to our houses today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Adam. That was awesome. Hope you got some good notes. I got a lot. Man, do I get a lot of notes when people preach. Brother Adam, you covered a lot, a lot of stuff there tonight, and I thank the Lord for that. I noticed there's some, there was some great discernment in there that usually it takes... I usually don't hear that discernment from younger guys, especially concerning man-centered worship. I don't know if you noticed that when he was talking about that, the difference between man-centered, some of the lyrics with some of the songs that are out there. I'm not against all the songs that are just newer, but I tend to notice that a lot of worship today, even worship services, is very much man-centered. It's what do, what do we like, what do we want, what do we feel. Even in the, some of the songs, you can notice that. The difference between a lot of the things that are, are older are God-centered worship. And by the way, that's all only the way true worship should be. And that's vitally important that we all get our minds there. So when you get alone with God, that's the best form of worship. Just you and God. Amen? When you enter into your closet. That's the best form of worship. There are, there's collective and corporate worship. There's worship that you can do, you know, other ways. And those are good ways. But you just you and God. No music. No other things. Just you and God. That's the best form of worship. And really it is. And um, I noticed, uh, it was a phrase you just hinted real quick. He said something about change, and everybody wants change. And he said, I want change. And he mentioned something, change always starts with me. Isn't that a great phrase? How often the, in our world today, everybody wants change, but the natural mentality of man is change starts with you, right? Change starts with somebody else, right? This world will be fixed if everybody else would get their acts together, right? It'll start with the White House, but change only and always starts with me. Be careful you're not the one that wants change in the world everywhere. Don't do it. Change starts with me. And that's important. What a great thought that was. And I love that verse. O ye of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? That's a good part in there. Have you ever asked yourself that after the fact? Man, why was I doubting the Lord in that one? The Lord came through. It's hard in the moment to have that. So takeaways, trust the Lord, have that one-on-one time with God, and absolutely keep your focus on the Savior. I kind of said something like that right before we started. Brother Adam, didn't I say something like that? Keep our focus during this time on the main things, okay? The devil's going to try to distract us, but thank the Lord for that. Brother Adam, I appreciate that. That was just such, that was such great stuff. Um, now I got a sermon for Sunday, and that's good stuff. So wrote down a whole bunch of notes and make sure that's... Uh, what a blessing that was. I wanted you to make sure that you thank, the, thank Brother Adam for preaching tonight. I do want to tell you that I've got one more lesson. We're going to wrap up the book of Genesis next Sunday night. We're going to talk about the Tower of Babel. And the Tower of Babel actually has a lot to do with COVID. How many of you knew that? I'm, I'm serious about that. It is, it is something that is linked with that. Some of you guys, we're going to talk about Genesis 11. Then we're going to start a brand new series in the book of Revelation. So we're going to go from the beginning to the end, right? The Alpha, the Omega, of course, the Lord's center in all of that. And so some of you that found Genesis boring may find Revelation exciting or vice versa. I don't know. Hopefully, 
will get you somewhere. But next Sunday night, you'll be here. We're going to talk about Genesis 11 and the Tower of Babel and some of the things that happened and the ramifications of that even till today. We're going to wrap up Genesis, and then in two weeks, pray for us as we get going into prophecy. What is to come? That's a question a lot of people like to have. Um, I, I, I'm sometimes hesitant. Some people get very carried away in prophecy. And um, we have to be careful that we balance it biblically, and I'm going to hopefully do that in two weeks. All right, let's all stand for dismissal. God bless you. Hope you see you. Brother David, as he plays, you may be dismissed tonight.